Hey everybody, welcome to Meet Firebase, where you can meet the Googlers that make Firebase happen. My name is Doug Stevenson. We've got a great show for you today. Nalan Natal is joining us on the show. Thanks for being on the show, Nalan. Thank you. Tell us, Nalan, what do you do with the Firebase team? So I lead app quality at Firebase, which includes crash reporting and test lab. Okay, so it sounds like between crash reporting and test lab, those are two things that Firebase uh, provides to help you maintain a high quality in your app. Yeah, that's right. The idea is with Firebase test lab, you're able to ensure the stability and, and quality of your app before you release it um, by testing it on a variety of devices. And then with crash reporting, it's an SDK that lets you monitor your app while it's in production to make sure that uh, no major issues are happening um, to production users. Okay, I understand Firebase crash reporting had a big announcement recently, but I'll ask you about that later. But first, I wanna hear from you. What do you do outside of work? Most of my time is spent with my four-year-old twin boys. Uh, I'd say 90% of my time until we go to bed. Um, but I do like getting involved in this organization called The Last Mile which we do at San Quentin Prison, and the idea is to help inmates learn real life skills, and we teach them entrepreneurship, especially focused around tech and technology and the internet. So that's something I've been doing for a few years. The idea is to give them a lot of curriculum and coursework, as well as having them meet with people in the tech industry, and eventually they actually write a business plan and pitch it to venture capitalists um, at a media event, which is really exciting for everyone. Cool, sounds like you're giving these inmates something to do, something to do with their lives after they get out. So there's, you know, they, they don't end up back in the prison system later. Yeah, that's right. As, as we all know, it's, it's, the opportunities are limited um, once you get out of prison and there's a perception um, that the person's not qualified. And oftentimes that's true, but what we're trying to do is give them skills that are um, a, applicable right away and very relevant, right? Since the world has moved on, a lot of these guys have been in for 15, 20 years. So, you know, the exciting thing is we've had, I think, six or seven graduates that have come out of the program, and uh, some of them have gotten jobs at startups, and other ones, um, you know, are, are looking to do that. Some of them are starting their own businesses. So it seems like it's been fruitful so far, and uh, it's, a, it's a really great program. If you haven't heard of it, check it out. Yeah, it sounds like it's really rewarding work. Absolutely. So with all this work, though, certainly you must feel like you need to get away. I understand you told me before you had an interesting experience at running uh, of the Bulls. Now, could you tell us what is that and uh, what was your experience? There? Yeah, sure. Running of the Bulls is a race that happens in Pamplona, Spain. Um, basically, thousands of people run through the streets of Pamplona. At the beginning of the race, they let seven wild bulls run through with the, with the participants. So um, you're kind of racing with other people and these bulls. It's, it's pretty dangerous, but it's uh, absolutely thrilling. The goal is to get you know, from the start to the stadium um, without getting you know, hurt. <laughs> it, well, yeah, that's that's a good goal in, in life is to get from point A to point B without getting hurt. So what happened though? I mean, did you did you make it okay? Yeah, everyone made it out okay. There were other people that were maybe less fortunate, but no no serious injuries. So uh, yeah, Sounds it was, like it was a, a fun time. Yeah, an exhilarating experience. Yeah, yeah, uh, I don't recommend it, but it was uh, it was good to do. <laughs> well, you know, it was a good experience for those of us who went to the uh, Firebase Summit recently. Uh, we met up with a bunch of developers and had a bunch of news for them. Firebase Crash Reporting had a big announcement there as well. Could you tell us what's new in Firebase Crash Reporting? Yeah, so we fully launched at the Berlin event, which was really exciting. We had done a previous beta launch at I.O. For our launch, we introduced a bunch of new features. So first thing is um, we reduced our latency. So before we had 20 minutes before you'd find out you had a crash. Now it's less than a minute, um, so it's pretty much real time. And you also get alerted, so you don't have to check the dashboard repeatedly. You get email notifications when there are new crashes. Um, and then you have the ability to mark a, a crash as closed if you fixed it. And then if we see that again in the wild, we'll give you a, a regression email to let you know that this is happening again for some reason. Um, and the thing that I'm most excited about is that we're really trying to help developers diagnose and reproduce issues, not just identify them, right? So we've integrated deeply with Firebase Analytics. So you're getting events from Firebase Analytics in your crash logs. So you can see what the user was doing prior to the crash. So the, the whole idea is to give you more information and more context so you can solve this problem instead of, um, you know, spending all your time researching and diagnosing it and reproducing it. 
Well, it sounds like some uh, really good tools to, for developers to help uh, find and fix problems in their app. So I'm excited to see how people are making use of that. Now, speaking of crashes, tell me about the worst crash you ever had to diagnose and track down. Yeah, it's kind of technical, but we basically were parsing numbers. And um, in this app, it was one of the first mobile apps I had made. We built it for a US audience, but it had like international exposure pretty much from day one, um, which we weren't expecting. So in our number parsing, that we were doing, we thought all of the numbers would be kind of US formatted numbers um, with decimal points. And you know, when we put it out there, we started seeing that a lot, we were started hearing from a lot of our users that, there, that the app was crashing um, and we couldn't figure out why. We finally realized it was from certain South American countries, um, but we couldn't figure out what was going on. Turns out that if the locale on your phone is set to a non-US locale, or even specific locales to um, South America, then this crash would happen because I was using this library imp improperly. We would test on a few devices in our dev shop and uh, we would test on different versions and we would go back. We would try to, we would try all these different permutations. We spent a lot of time on figuring out, you know, different behaviors that maybe a user took to get to that spot. But um, we didn't realize that, you know, like 100% of these crashes were happening in certain locales. And once we realized that and were able to reproduce that issue on our own devices, we were able to resolve it very quickly. Hmm. So that's, a, that's something that Firebase crash reporting will tell you, is that where in the world or what locale the user's on. So those kind of patterns should be easy or easier to track now. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, we, we tell you the geography of your each crash. And we're working on tools to even, you know, surface these insights for you so you don't have to do any digging, so. Great, well I, I hope that means that I don't have to do any hard work now when it comes to <laughs> triaging bug reports that's because that's idea. one of the worst parts of engineering is having to dig into those kinds of things. Absolutely. So. Well, you know, and everyone else at home knows that crashes are kind of a pain. Uh, we often have some memories about crash computers and the screens that we see, and so I wanna play a game with you to see if you can identify some of those screens from uh, computers throughout Yeah, history. sure, let's do it. All right, cool, so I have a tablet here. Uh, the way we're gonna do it is I'll give you the tablet. You can see the screens here at home. Everyone will be able to see the screen uh, on their screen. So would you take a look there and okay. tell me what you think? Yes, this is a classic blue screen of death. So this is Windows. I'm not sure which version, but maybe Windows 95 or earlier than that. Yep, it's classic blue screen of death. That's right. Okay, let's do the um, next one. This is interesting. So a bunch of different languages. I don't think I've ever seen this before. This may be like a air, in the airplane, like in the- Oh, you overhead? mean like an airplane uh, entertainment console? Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately it's not. It's actually a uh, Mac OS X, more recent model. Wow, I've so. never seen that. I used That's to have cool. those all the time when I was doing uh, Mac development in the uh, like mid 2000s. Yeah. Wow, That's crazy. The right. next one. Um, this one is a classic Mac um, screen of, or crash like an old Macintosh. I've definitely seen that before. Yeah, old Mac. The name for that icon is the Sad Mac. So that's <laughs> uh, for obvious reasons, it's sad. So. Very sad. Okay, let's do the next one. Ah, uh, yes. This is the Twitter fail whale. I've seen this many times. Um, I've used Twitter since, you know, I think 10 years or when it first started. So I, I remember seeing this a lot back in the day. It was a big deal. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people talked about that. Fortunately, we don't see that much anymore. I'm happy for that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Let's do the next one. This looks like a Mac from the branding. I don't know exactly which device. I've never seen it on iPhone. I would say maybe even earlier than that, like a Newton or something. Well, yeah, it actually is an iPhone. So if you look at the shape of the of the device, it has the you know the iconic uh, iPhone button. So Got yeah, it. it's a it's an iPhone. Who knew? Let's do the next one. This one is crazy. Um, it looks like there's an ASCII cow on it. There's a I cow. I have no yeah. idea what this is. So it turns out this is a Linux kernel oops, which is like a, uh, it's like a kernel panic, except it's recoverable. So the idea is if something went really wrong, but not too wrong, you might see something like that. Got so it. That's an interesting uh, variant on the panic. Let's do the next one. All right. Software failure. Press left mouse button to continue. Hmm, guru meditation. I have no idea what this could be. Yeah, this is an interesting one. Guru meditation, I don't know what that means, but this is an Amiga crash. So going way back into like the 80s, uh, that's what we're looking at here. Got it. So, okay, let's do uh, one more. Hmm, this looks like if you have a, a bad cable to your like old CRT monitor or something like that. Yeah, it does look like a graphics problem. 
But this is actually a, a trick question. This is a load screen for a Commodore 64 game. So it's crazy. It's, yeah, it's not a crash. It turns out our, our tolerance for what's acceptable to see on the screen is has changed since the <laughs> yeah. 80s. So yeah, no, that's a load screen, but I would consider that to be a crash in, in my opinion. So yeah, it does not look good. All right, let's take a look at your uh, score up on the board there. I think Pass I stumped you with a lot of those. Yeah, well, there's no pass or fail. There's only <laughs> there, there's only entertainment here. So looks good. Thanks for playing, Nala. Absolutely. Thanks for being on the show. And thank you for sharing about Last Mile and your experience with running at the Bulls. Uh, if you want to learn more about Firebase crash reporting and Test Lab, be sure to click the links below. Uh, that's all we have time for this Meet Firebase. I'm Doug Stevenson. Thank you and see you next time. <laughs>